Nadia Bilchik is a television news anchor, keynote speaker, author, trainer, and communications consultant. 19 number one best-selling have been nominated and won so many awards throughout your careers. She has a wealth of experience interviewing and consulting with well-renowned figures, celebrities, and corporations. Nadia speaks on how to get people to like you, trust you, and want to do business with you. Over the last few weeks, the entire world has been monitoring the treatment of your grandfather, Nelson Mandela. And my job was to introduce it and provide... With topics like leveraging the power of your personal presence, networking for success, and lighting the fire. Nadia Bilchik. Hello and a very good Monday morning to you. So I try when I speak to you to talk about trends and how you can ramplify, meaning how you can ramp up your existing business, how you can amplify your impact. And something that's amplifying impact and gaining interest is the Clubhouse app. So I invited somebody who I met in a club, in a clubhouse, Jeff Ettringer, a warm welcome. Hello, welcome. Thank you so much. So Jeff, this is the first time I'm seeing you seeing you because you and I have communicated on Clubhouse. And I have to say that some people's pictures look better than they do. And you look as good as you did in your Clubhouse picture. Thank you very much, <laughs> Nadia. <laughs> so Jeff, let's talk about Clubhouse. First of all, it's only available on Apple phones. And I'm still, the verdict is out for me whether it's worthwhile or not. And I want you to tell people who are using it and those who have heard about it and those who have never heard about it. Let's start at the beginning. What is the Clubhouse app? Okay, so Clubhouse is an application that is a drop-in audio uh, application. Paul, Rohan, and Anu, uh, there's nine developers. They started developing this app a while ago. And last year... Um, uh, I joined the app. There's about a 250,000 people on the app and uh, it's in beta. And uh, now there's 3 million people. It grew from a million to 2 million. And now just this week, 3 million active users on Clubhouse and it's growing fast. Last night broke all records. It was crazy. Elon Musk came on and actually presented on Clubhouse. So he was there. I got. I was one of 25 in the room. So I actually have it on my phone right here. And yes. Jumped into uh, the audio. The um, essentially when they created this, they just wanted a way for people to be able to talk and communicate, um, collaborate, and and bring just great conversations to the world. So that was what Paul and uh, Rohan had started, and I, I've been super impressed. They have town hall meetings on the weekends about the app. Uh, they developed it for the iPhone and for Apple iOS 13 and above. So if you have an iPad, you could join as well. But they only did that because that was their first app. And now they're having to hire people. There's only nine. They're hiring people right now, trying to get more people in to help to develop it for the Android and for many other things. So and if you have questions, please ask us. We will answer them live or afterwards. Now, Jeff Entringer is actually rather fascinating because he's been creating studios for business people, for entrepreneurs who need to come across well in their virtual world. And I've been speaking, Jeff, about how to communicate in your virtual world and how to ensure virtual engagement. So when I met you, I thought, what a wonderful alliance. So, and I met you on Clubhouse. Yeah. Now, your whole mantra is make anything easy. Yep. So, if people are watching right now, they don't have the Clubhouse yet, but they do have some kind of Apple device. Make it easy for us. Step number one. Step number one. So my company is make anything easy. So, and I, I host rooms on Clubhouse, how to make Clubhouse easy. So the first thing you need to do is go to joinclubhouse.com. And at joinclubhouse.com, it'll send a link to your phone, and then you can download the app. And once you download the app, you can do your creator name and or you actually excuse me your username and reserve it and then it's invite only currently so this was uh done in order to kind of throttle the amount of people but also just because of the app um is on apple only so you have to get an invite so i have invitations and, and i'd be more than happy the, the whole group last night uh grew i think we had about sixty thousand users or, or probably even more just try to get on um last night uh 
millions of people were trying to get on when they saw Elon Musk uh, tweet. So that's what you do is you go to the app, you download the app uh, and make sure it's the right one. So join clubhouse.com uh, and that'll help you get it. And then uh, and then we can get invites out and, and people that you know will uh, actually be able to let you in the room sometimes as well. And it's, it's just really exciting to be able to help. And you. what makes it, I mean, Jeff, I've been in your rooms. Yeah. You are a fantastic moderator. So again, oh. verdict's still out for me. And I'll tell you why, Jeff. For, for the app. Yeah. For, for the app is outstanding, but mm -hmm. because we are living in this age of clutter and noise, I think it's incumbent upon all of us to say, what am I spending my time doing? So as long as I'm being deliberate, right? So yeah. I have to tell you, I really don't like people in social events or social settings being on their phones, right? Right. It's like something that I think should be taboo. You know, you're having a conversation with someone at a dinner party and suddenly you see them going, Right. You're like, am I so boring? Right. I, I'm looking for my ear pods because a lot of people will do the ear pods um, and they'll put them in their ear and then they'll listen to it because it's like listening to a radio station. So it doesn't detract from what's going on, but it does require that you are listening to it. And what some people pointed out is they were driving in the car and they could listen to the app. They said they have never been more engaged on their phone than they have in this app. They're driving down the road. They're listening to it. They've been on it 24 hours a day. They're trying to listen to something, gain more knowledge and everything else. But I, I can see your point too, that um, that at times it becomes distracting and you're going to be constantly uh, pulled away from other sources of media and other things as well. Well, I think again, Jeff, with everything, if we're going to make things easy and ramplify, I think part of it is to be deliberate. So what I've been suggesting to people, and I'd love your best practices, I'm saying, if you go onto Clubhouse and if you have any questions, you can ask Jeff or I after. He really is an aficionado. I've been in rooms that he's moderated. Sure. He does it so skillfully. You've really got it down to a fine art. Thank you. Um, but my thing is maybe do one or two a day and then follow up with the people you meet like we have now. So in networking, I say networking is a connection. You and I yeah. have a connection on Clubhouse. I was just so impressed with how you dealt with the room, how you really listen to everybody because everybody wants to speak. Yeah, And then we're having a conversation now. And who knows? It could be a collaboration. One of my clients can need you to build a beautiful studio. One of your clients could need some virtual presentation skills. Or we just become great friends and I introduce you to your next painter or your yeah. next architect. You know, you never know in networking. So the other thing about Clubhouse is I say to people, follow up with people. Find out who they are in Zoom. I say go beyond the box. Oh, yeah. In Clubhouse, go beyond the picture, which is what we're doing now. So my Friday night story was I had to go to my purse to fetch something. And I saw at Clubhouse that a group of people were having a deep conversation about the history of the N word. And I was just so intrigued by this conversation. So yeah. I joined. I found myself going into the laundry room of my friend's house because the conversation was so riveting. I met so many wonderful people. I know. And me, who always tells people why, is something going on that's more interesting than me. <laughs> the hostess looked at me and she said, hmm, something more interesting than us. Anyway, I met some very thoughtful, interesting people. It landed up being a, a, an amazing conversation. And, you know, beyond and going deep in this particular conversation. And I felt like it was a privilege for me to join that conversation because, you know, here I am, a middle-aged white woman. And I'm joining this conversation with people who I may not otherwise connect with and meet. And I felt like I'd made 20 new friends at the end of the evening. Yeah. And that, and that's what it is. It's about friendship. And that's, that's what I've, I've, I've learned. Um, I think I'm up to like 3000 followers now. Yes. You've got and, the most followers of anyone I know. Now, and, when did you join Clubhouse? Uh, in uh, last year, uh, December. So I got on, uh, on the Clubhouse in December of last year and uh, at the end of the year, and it's just skyrocketed. I mean, and really what I've done is organically just gotten to know each person. I mean, they've been in my room, they've heard me talk once they've,
they've heard me talk, they've followed me, and that's how I've, go I've gotten the growing. We were talking tonight asking, what question would you ask Elon Musk? And I was like, hey, I'd ask him, um, first off, ask him if he wanted to go to dinner. Second, it would be, hey, what kind of batteries are you using? Are you aware of the world's largest battery is a, a water battery where they pump water up into a mountain and they release the energy? Is that something he'd look at doing uh, versus having his Tesla Tesla cars plugged in and reusing and repurposing that energy during the peak times for solar and all those cool things. But those conversations become very real when people hear you talk, they want to connect with you. They want to join with you. And that's how I've grown a following. And I've DM'd all these people. People have been sending me messages. In fact, right before here, I, I was in a huge room with Farouk in his whole um, uh, room. And we had uh, followed this whole Elon Musk thing. There's 3000 people in in that room and I told them hey I'm going on the LinkedIn and they're listening real time to what's going on and so I think that's the difference um, yo he was he's on Twitter and stuff he's just one of the guys in Clubhouse that has been doing this um, we're all collaborating in order to to work together to hear what was going on he had opened a room to listen to Elon Musk um, and then we all uh, opened up separate rooms and stuff to try to hear it um, and you know what I want to ask Elon Musk? I want to ask Elon Musk how he pronounces his son's name. Oh, that's a great question. I mean, how do you actually pronounce that name? I have no idea. That's a well, very great question. Knows, I see, wait, we have six comments. I'm going to read some somebody, of our comments. Okay. Yeah, maybe Thank you, Shensi M. Augustine. Good morning. Frank Lorenzo, I heard people were selling invitations. Is that true, Jeff? That what? Oh yes, some people are selling invitations. We, I, I, I think that it's best if you give the invitations away. Um, I don't think monetizing on that part of it. They're actually talking about monetizing the app. I've helped so many people get into the app. I've given okay. all mine away. So uh, I want to talk. Okay, so let's get through the questions and then we'll. Yeah. That. If you're just joining us, I have the Make Anything Easy aficionado Jeff Ettringer and today he is helping us make Clubhouse easy and uh, Leslie Holbrook says send so an invite we will Frank says it's addicting for sure so many rooms I believe with all social media that you must do it but you need to control it don't let it become something that controls you so be very deliberate in how you are using this that's for me because otherwise yes. I can get sucked in. Uh, Shensi says it's so true. It can be addictive. Yes, Shensi, I'm in there now. And Pitta says, go, Jeff. Mess <laughs> moderator in Clubhouse. Congratulations on the podcast. Okay, so if you are just joining us, we're talking about the Clubhouse app. Jeff is a full convert. He has a big following. He believes in it. I'm still going. Let me see the value. And I want to say, Jeff, for me, value is not only getting more speaking gigs or more coaching. That's not only the value. The value for me is meeting interesting people and learning. I've got a friend called Eduardo Briseño, and he's actually writing a book on performance and learning and how right now I am performing, but I'm also learning. Yeah. And that's you, when you outfit someone's studio beautifully, that's you performing, that's you doing your work. But you've chosen to get onto Clubhouse, A, because it makes business sense, but also you're enjoying it and you've stimulated and you're learning about batteries and Elon Musk and how to pronounce obscure names. Great. <laughs> My whole thing, Jeff, is go in with purpose. I was telling you, for those yep. of you who have just joined us, I'm resetting the room, Jeff. That's the thing we say in Clubhouse as people go reset the room, right? Is that on Friday night, I mentioned I got involved in a fascinating discussion with people who I may not otherwise have met. And we had this very interesting discussion, very respectful. It was uh, quite a controversial. We were talking about racism. We were yeah. talking about words you use and don't use. I spoke about coming from South Africa, living during the apartheid years. In fact, it was such an interesting conversation. I found it hard to tear myself away and go back to dinner, which is rude. So I'm trying not to do that. <laughs> you know, you don't want your children saying to you, mom, is Clubhouse more interesting than us? Yes. Oh. That, 
right? <laughs> yeah, and it's it's interesting as I use the app and you start to do things, you realize that you you want to go back and find those conversations. And I think for utility wise, um, I, I mean, I have friends all over the world. Um, Japan just blew up. There's so many people that just joined uh, Japan last week. Before the week before that, it was Germany, uh, Norway. There's all these these areas that are just blowing up of people getting on to the app. And and I think in the U.S. we start to forget the fact that all the other countries use their cell phone as their main source to get on the internet. So this is going to be huge around the world. And that's where I believe that as people start to use it, they're going to have to be more mindful about it and use it properly. Um, as well as building studios, I've been doing automation and controls uh, and robotics for 25 years in the industry uh, for manufacturing. Um, I had my own company, systems integration company, uh, Integra Controls, and now I'm doing Make Anything Easy. And I found that passion in helping people make things easy and clubhouse was one of those and the ability to help people join clubhouse to figure out how to use it um just rang true with me it was like how do i educate people on this app how can i then help them in the real world as well and make things very easy for them in order to create something or do something they'd want to automate things um so studios was the first thing i'll do adventures i'll do yoga i'll do make travel easy and go all over the world right and so I, and I love yoga. I love uh, doing adventures. I love motorcycles. I was at the Isle of Man. I got to meet Prince William when I was there. I was in South Africa, Eswatini, um, and uh, Morocco and India. I did the highest motorable road in the world on a motorcycle. Drove up over through um, uh, near, not too far away from uh, Mount, uh, uh, Mount Everest. And just had a, had a blast. I mean, it's it's just about enjoying life, and that's really where Clubhouse has brought that back. That feeling of wow, we're all connected, and during this pandemic, it's brought everybody together. I think we're getting to have our voice for the first time. I truly be truly believe that what Clubhouse has done is it give is given a microphone to everybody on the world if they want to have it, a platform they can host a room, they can talk about those controversial things, and it's really impressive that they're allowed to do that. It's it's, it's just a great platform. Go ahead, please. No, no, it's so interesting that you're saying that. And by the way, full disclosure, neither Jeff or I have uh, any vested interest in Clubhouse. We don't have shares yet. Correct. Because I don't think shares are available. But Jeff, I think they should hire you. And I'll tell you why. Because I was thinking, do I keep the app? Do I delete the app? Because as I've mentioned earlier, I'm very deliberate in how I spend my right. time. And I came onto your room and there was something about your genuine caring, how you invited people on. I also didn't get the sense in your room that you were hard selling something. Right. Now, it's quite okay to say, I'm Jeff Ettringer. I do this. I build studios. Why not? I think it's helpful. And people, Jeff, they look you up. So when you speak, they go onto your profile. Give us some guidance. Now, you've got a very complete profile. I have a small one at this point. What <laughs> kind of profile should you be writing and how does it differ to other platforms? Oh, wow. So um, in Clubhouse, so so what's interesting is they're just creating this app. It's just beta version. And I appreciate the, the sentiment about Clubhouse. I actually considered, I was like, they have part-time, they have different things for Clubhouse and to be a community manager, uh, they have, uh, you know, the opening. So I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm, I'll reach out to Paul and, and Rohan and see, uh, see where it goes. I think that would be a good- uh, I'll put in a word for you. <laughs> I, I was thinking because uh, Braxis, who's overseas, he is so amazing. He does these rooms as well. Um, and and I think that Clubhouse is really a, a wave of the future in this app. And, and there'll be more in other apps as well. But I think this is the app to really go to. Just because of Paul and, and Rohan, they're very focused on the community. They're and Paul and Rohan, us. founders of the Clubhouse. Yes, correct. They're the two guys that founded um, Clubhouse. And then they have uh, six employees. Uh, wait, seven employees. There's nine people total currently. Um, and I was like, hey, I want to help them out. Even if I could be a community manager, even if those things, and if if they're able to help me out to to, to grow the app, I think that'd be great. I'd, I'd love, I'm doing it right now just because I love connecting people. It's something I've done. I have a huge family 
uh, and g gigantic, 220 members in my family. My How mom, many brothers and sisters? I have five. And my mom comes from a family of 11, seven girls, four boys. And my dad comes from a family of 14, seven boys, seven girls. And there's 156, I think it is, underneath my dad's and 87 underneath my mom. Uh, so I have this gigantic family, know them all. And this feels like this is one big family. Everybody on this globe is one big family. And that's what I'm just, I'm just doing what I've done the whole time is just connect people, help them grow and, and give a safe space for it. And so as you asked about the, the app on the app, actually for your profile yourself, the difference is you'll actually do emojis and you'll use different things on the profile. So in the app, when you get in there, you want to create emojis, you want to put in titles. The first three lines are very important because that's what everybody What does your first three lines say? My first three lines. Oh, that's a great question. I'll look at, I'll look at my profile right now because you change it. Like the emojis. With the emojis? You want me to say with the I emojis? Don't know. While you're doing that, awesome conversation. Oh. Um, it's an app that forces people to show up as themselves because there's a voice to the face. How have you dealt with the feeling like you're missing something when you are away from the app or when you're in one room at scanning the hallway? Thank you, Shensi. So answer that, but first, let's stay focused because you know, okay. Jeff and I, we can uh, <laughs> get all over the place. Let's stay focused on writing a profile. What I'm hearing from you is your profile is not as formal as LinkedIn. It can be a little quirky. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Thank you for showing us. There's all those little emojis. Yes, stay right there. Can you see that? While you're showing us that, do you remember what your first three lines say? Yeah, make anything easy, CEO and founder, entrepreneur, clubhouse mod, automation and controls, AI. And then read the rest? And then the rest is uh, explaining my room. So make clubhouse easy from three to four on Monday. And then I have, and then I'll scroll. And then here's, oh, it actually went in to edit my um, profile. But here's, here's the actual profile. So you just add a whole, oops, I'm sorry, guys. You add just emojis and different things, flags for all the countries, um, stuff about the world's first computer. I built a replica of that at a team at Ames Laboratory. Um, and then I have, more, most importantly, at the bottom here is my LinkedIn and my uh, Twitter. That's so, important. Yes. You go to your LinkedIn, your Twitter. And one thing I learned from your room is, if people want to find you, they'll find you. Like often, even now, yeah. um, somebody remarked, why don't I have www.nadiaspeaks.com? And I said, you know, in this day and age, if you want to find Nadia Bilchik or Jeff Ettringer, it's easy. We don't yes. need to spell it out to you. And I think we also don't need to blast you with sales because something that Mark Angelo, who's a friend of mine says, he says, you know, following someone is like friendship. It is earned. Yeah. That's like, follow me, follow me, follow me. It's like, be my friend, be my friend, be my friend. Let's earn it. Let's say we are offering you advice oh. and guidance. And then if you want to join our community, thank you. I like that. That and 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 be aware. I mean, when you go in Clubhouse, there were there are people that have opened up rooms and just try to get followers. And uh and and there are some rooms that are a little bit shady and they're trying to sell people, like you said. So don't think that for a moment that it isn't different than any other social media. I mean, that happens, but they're working on getting rid of those, some of those people, any bad actors, anybody who doesn't have good heart intention, they are actually removing them from the app and they've been doing it. And so it's it's uh, it's really powerful to see an app and the community come together. They voice their concerns. They send information to Paul and Rohan and they say, we don't like this. And then they eliminate some of those rooms. And they did that just this last week. It's been amazing. And I think, Jeff, if you are going to use Clubhouse and you're saying, how does this grow my business? My suggestion to people is if you come across as authentic and if you offer value, people will click on your profile. They can go to your LinkedIn, they can reach you. Being too much of a hard sell is not in the spirit of what Clubhouse is. Right. I mean, Jeff, I would love nothing more if as a result of this conversation, you do more business, either as a travel aficionado, building a studio in your capacity as a consultant. Of course, I would like that. Yeah. But I think it's a more organic way of doing it. And, you know, I do a lot of talks about the new normal. What is the new normal? The new normal is expanding virtual worlds, shrinking attention span, shrinking trust, ah. and there's such less tolerance. 
we're all overloaded. We're all anxious. Think about this. The world as we know it is uncertain and unsafe, right? Exactly. We don't know. It's a friend of mine is a therapist in Cape Town, South Africa. She yeah, said, yeah. It's peculiar. I feel like we're in a sci-fi movie. Oh, so definitely. it's peculiar. So the world as we know it, there's less trust. So you're meeting these people and you're going, now what I do, and I'd love to know what you do. So if I come into Jeff's room, and remember, I'm much newer at this yep. than Jeff is, I'm still feeling my way. I click on everyone in the room. I look at their profile and I immediately follow them. Yeah. So I'm going, okay, now out of all those people, and I only allow myself to do two a day, that's for me, because Shensi says, how can you not feel like you're missing out? Yep. Shensi, FOMO is real. And we had, what is your advice to FOMO, Jeff? Yeah, I think I think um, you have to really take um, take control over what you do. So when you go into the room, or when you're on Clubhouse, or in life, you can only focus on a certain amount of things at once. And if you try to focus on everything at once, it can become overwhelming. So when I enter the room, I take and I listen to the people, and, and the people that I hear talk, those are the people that I want to follow. I'll, I'll sometimes if it's a small room, I'll follow everybody, or if it's a welcome room and stuff like that. But I want to follow those people that I hear them speaking. I want to hear their authentic voice. I want to know that they're real. And that's the difference in Clubhouse. You can hear somebody's voice and their timbre and what it is that drives them. And you can tell, you can really, it, that really indicates, um, you know, where they're coming from at times. And you can see some of those fears. I think it's unearthing a lot of fears that people have had in the past, but it's also allowing those people to come out for the first time and actually speak. And you um, can't let someone do it for you. It's not like you can right. get someone. I have someone managing my LinkedIn or my Facebook. Right. You, there's no manager. You can't have somebody you, else speak for you. A couple of questions I want to ask you. Number one, what if you have somebody who tries to hijack your room? Yeah. Um. So what what had happened? And the only reason that happened is because there's a problem with the person moderating. When you open a room, so they have a room and they're working on this too. But really, when you when you start a room, and this is something I teach everyone when they're they're coming to clubhouse you should be the only one with the keys to the room you shouldn't give those keys away to everyone else don't give the keys to the clubhouse away keep the keys in your pocket if you give it to someone else you give it to someone you trust and you give them the keys they then help you moderate or there's a function where you have somebody who's looking for hands raised and they're looking for someone who's asking to come up on stage and that's a purpose to give somebody the moderator badge. Otherwise, you keep it yourself. And the reason their room's getting hijacked is they gave the keys to someone else. And then they get a room with 10 moderators and they they opt and start moderating everybody. There should only be five moderators at most. And they should all be very trusted. Well, what had happened is those people gave it to someone else. That moderator came into the room and they ended the room or they send that person who started the room down to the audience and they can't do anything about it. And then they start bumping people down. Nobody knows what's going on. They don't know. And then you get kicked out of the room and you can't talk. So that's a problem with the person who started the room and allowing others to take control that they don't trust. And that trust bores out over time. It's been correcting itself. And so you go into the room, we're talking Clubhouse. If you're just joining us, the Clubhouse app, you go in as the moderator. Um, the one call I was on really did descend into an enormous argument and fight oh. and became quite ugly, but that's only one that I've been yeah. in. And the minute somebody seems to be hard selling me something, then oh. I go, yeah, I do too. It's it's interesting. You hop in those rooms when you hear follow for follow and they start saying things, you know, and that's where they're eliminating a lot of those rooms. They want in-depth conversations. Music, the Lion King was on here. Elon Musk was just on here <laughs> discussing all these things about about Robin Hood, about all everything that just happened with the stocks and the trading and everything else and and just about life and how he's just a normal guy. I was like, Yep, you're a normal guy. He gets up, he has to check his Instagram. He's been on the app a week. And he said, yeah, this is great. I like this. So I think that that, that idea of, of the ability to be able to just jump into a room, create your own room, do it on your own and start talking. People will join in and they'll come into the room based on the topic and what's going on. And you can have some wonderful conversations. Realize that only one conversation can go on at once. Our conversation is a live stream. This can only happen right now in this moment. And that's the where the some of the FOMO is coming from, Nadia, is the fact that people are afraid 
trade. They missed it. Well, guess what? None of that was recorded with Elon, but people recorded it. So now they're trying to rebroadcast it and everything. And I'm like, why don't you just bring him back on and, and have him come on and speak again? Instead, they're trying to capture this and hold on to, and that fear is real. They should just allow it to be, uh, you know, go, to go to the wind like all of our conversations and not try to capture it. Because how can you rewatch all of those things? Exactly. Um, I'm curious to know what your most interesting ones have been other than your own. I went on one on the weekend where someone was giving singing lessons. It was amazing. So here's a guy, he's some New York, I wish I had remembered it, but he's a Broadway star. And then people in the group are singing and he's giving them technique around breath control and oh. voice. And it was just magic. I had that. Uh, Catherine Woods uh, does Confident Communications. Uh, she's at the NSA speaker here in Atlanta. And she taught people in the room how to breathe, said lay down. And people came back, oh, my gosh, like this works great. And it was amazing. She's so amazing. Oh, that's funny. Okay. Well, I mean, so there really are interesting ones. And Frank says, do you believe it will be a place of literal free speech? See how conservative speech has been shut down on other apps. Oh, interesting question. Thanks, Frank. Absolutely. It absolutely is. Um, you can go in, start a room. You can say, uh, obviously, within guidelines, you're not attacking someone or anything else. There's guidelines you need to read, the rules you need to read. Um, no bullying, zero tolerance. People are booted off of that app if, if they do anything terrible. And I've heard it. And then that person disappears um, because they they're gone they, because they've been kicked out. But you can go in there and talk about whatever you want. If you want to swear, you can swear. Obviously, if people don't want to be in the room, they should leave the room. Mm -hmm. Everybody can join. You can start your own room with your friends. You can have closed rooms that nobody comes into. You can have social rooms where everybody you're following gets notified and they can come in. And there's so many cool rooms you can open. And then there's clubs within the clubhouse <laughs> that are put together that right. then the community club, um, Ed Newsbaum has an an awesome club, the OG club, and he hosts OG so stands for old, uh, old gangster. Okay. 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 <laughs> yeah. That's what, that's what originally it stands for. So you're the, the original, like original person around there. So I'm part of that club too. And Abraxas has one 9am in London every morning at 9am, they get up and they say grand rising and, and Abraxas <laughs> is amazing. And so he hosts it. And we, in the morning, if it's at 4am, I get to hear the tail end of that. And there's some rooms that start and they don't stop for 24 hours. There was a world record room. I forget how long it was a week or something they've been keep on going and didn't close the room and people just kept on handing the mod to their trusted person and they kept the room open for some world record time of constantly having a conversation non-stop it's just in you can it's freedom of speech most definitely you can talk about what you want as long as you're respectful to everybody in the room no, it's so, been so fascinating. You know, again, my mantra to those of us who are boomer exes, unlike you, is I don't know if you're an ex or a Y, but you're not a boomer. For those of us who are resistant to change, all right. I'm saying to people, and this has been my mantra, Jeff, is try things. Don't not do it because you don't know how. Don't not do right. it because you're scared of it. So at least try. And I'm grateful that I tried because otherwise I wouldn't have met you and we wouldn't be having this conversation. True. I do want to, just a word of caution, is be very deliberate with your time. You know, Mihai Chick sent Mihai wrote Flow. Remember right. Flow? And he said, you know, can we truly be in the moment and just flow like we have been today, Jeff, yeah. and I'm talking to anything or make anything easy. Um, the power of flow and not being anxious that you should be somewhere else. So be in the moment, see who you can meet and don't only see who I can meet strategically for business, but who could be an interesting resource for me going forward? Oh my so gosh. That's that's, and, and it is, it's about being present. I, I really believe it being present is the most powerful thing you can do. And that might've been what you felt on the app that I was present. I was with you. I was nowhere else. And I just wanted to make sure that the people in the room felt that. And, you know, that takes some energy. You have to be able to unplug from that and take care of yourself and, and go inward and think about those things. And so I appreciate it. I could feel it when you came into the room. I was like, oh, my gosh, it felt like we'd known each other for a while. And that's the yes. beauty of the app. And that, you know, and part of navigating our virtual world is to look for new opportunities. You know, what has changed during COVID? How are you dealing with your mental health? And I think for some people, this is wonderful company. Yeah. 
Absolutely. So, Jeff Ettringer, thank you so much. Be present and I'm your life unplug. Thanks, Peter, for that. We've got great questions and thank you for your participation. I will thank make sure that I put Jeff's contacts into my chat. And also, please, if you would like an invite, let us know and we will send you an invite. Jeff has, I have several. He yep. is the aficionado. <laughs> Jeff, when is your next room for us to join? So uh, today at 2 o'clock, because at 3 o'clock I'm helping host another room. So today at 2 p.m. I'm going to host a Make Clubhouse Easy room where I bring in people, teach them about it for an hour, um, and just show them how to go on. And they can find me on my Instagram here on LinkedIn. And obviously they can go into a clubhouse that way as well. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to host those rooms and keep on helping people get in. And I'll reach out to uh, Paul and, and uh, Rohan to see about that community manager stuff, the, the things that they have open on their job postings. They have job postings right now. They're looking for Android people uh, to develop this app out and release it to the Androids as well. I think that's important because, you know, there's something yeah. about, well, I don't have any Apple device, so I can't be part of the club. And that feels the same stuff. So that's good to know that they are doing that. But, you know, something this reinforces, as does our conversation today, is the human need for connection, to Absolutely. be heard, to be validated, to be part of something. And we're all looking for that. But again, I'm going to give you my final clubhouse thoughts and then Jeff, your final, is for me, don't go on just to peruse. Go on and say, how do I turn this connection into a conversation, into a collaboration, so that I can do what Jeff and I were doing, which is go beyond just a voice. Because otherwise, you're just in a big, full room at a party, and you're just working the room without really having conversations. And my mantra in networking is, instead of working the room, rather have a meaningful conversation with a couple of quality people. That has served me better. Your oh, yeah, I think I think this uh, um, just going when you go into Clubhouse, having that intention, be present, search out those interesting things you want. And sometimes search out some just some interest. There's a room lullaby room. People sleep in the room and there's a guy playing music in the background and they fall asleep. There was a, a confessions room with uh, parents giving confessions. And this lady got on and she said, I'm in the bathroom. I'm hiding from my kids. They're outside the door right now. And <laughs> I can't tell them I'm on Clubhouse because I've been <laughs> listening to the earpod and I haven't been listening to my kids. And, and I need to say, and that was just the most amazing mm -hmm. confession, but you can find these meaningful conversations. But like you said, you have to stop at some point and go and apply what you've learned after you've been present and actually connect with somebody like we did and go out into the real world and apply just those few, few um, first few things because you need to, after you've written down so many notes and tried to capture it, you have to apply it. Take what you need, apply it immediately, act on it, and then re-enter the app again. Okay, so Jeff, I would love to host a room with you sometime on yes. just owning your network, the principles yep. of authentic networking. Yes. I really think the biggest thing that stops people networking is they don't know how to be a go-giver as much as a go-getter. And my friend Mark Angelo always says being a go-giver is putting the other person's interests, not maybe before yours, but equal yeah. to yours. And if people could know how to do that, and I'll just give you an example. Somebody wanted a referral from me. Right. So instead of saying, Nadia, I'd appreciate your advice or guidance, it was more like, I know you know this person, connect me. People don't know how to ask gracefully. So at some point, I hope we get to do that. It has already been 37 minutes, which is very long in television time. So <laughs> my final word to you is connect with Jeff and I. I'm Nadia Bilchik. I've teach people how to really connect and engage in the virtual world and give presentations that impact, engage, influence, and inspire. And Jeff creates studios and Jeff makes anything easy, including Clubhouse. Join him again when, Jeff? Uh, today at 2 p.m. And then during the week, you can just see I'm flying it under make anything easy. And importantly, I have two blue diamond uh, emojis because emojis are searchable in there. So look for emojis and make anything easy. To be continued. Jeff Ettringer, thank you so much for joining me on How to.